Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I am joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. I have to tell you first that when we scheduled this episode of Strange Love Live, it was the furthest out we'd ever scheduled an episode. It was months and months ago, and Aaron Hockley and I were talking in, in the living room after uh, a show that he was a part of the studio audience for, and we said, let's schedule a Word Camp Portland episode of Strange Love Live right like a week after we announced um, that we open up for tickets, and that way it'll be really exciting and everyone will want to go. Well, it's a week later. Ticket sales opened up. Last week, we've got Aaron Hockley here to talk about WordCamp Portland and Dale Chumley as well. Um, but the sad news is, is that if you're watching this and you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you're going to have to go on the wait list. <laughs> yeah, we had a really great situation in that we've sold all of our tickets uh, much faster than we anticipated. So it's it's a good problem to have. Unfortunately, though, if there are people that still want to get in. Um, there's a couple different ways they can do that, but the waiting list is kind of the main one. All right, well, let's give the uh, low, the low cost option for getting in and the high cost option for getting in. So there's there's really three ways you can still get into WordCamp Portland if you don't uh, if you don't have a ticket. Um, two of those options won't cost you a lot of money. Um, the first option, which is you know totally completely free, is that. Uh, We'll be giving away a pair of tickets at the Portland WordPress user group meeting this coming Thursday. So at 6 o'clock at WebTrends. Um, I think the theme for the meeting is that uh, Kelly Gamont and uh, Robin Catesby are going to talk about uh, theming and customizing your WordPress theme. Um, but we're also going to be giving away a pair of tickets to WordCamp. So if you didn't get in, come to the meeting. You might win a tickets through a random drawing. Um, Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Is the pair of tickets going to one person, or are they each going to a separate individual? Oh, you have to ask the hard questions. <laughs> I should figure that out by Thursday. You should. Um, my gut says we'll probably give them to two separate individuals, I okay. think. Um, so that's one way to get in. Mm -hmm. um, the other way is we do have a waiting list. Um, if you go to the website, which is wordcampportland.org, um, there's hit the registration link. Um, there's a link to the waiting list website. You can sign up. Um, basically, just puts your name and email address on a list. And if we have spaces become available um, from people who aren't able to attend, we'll fill those spaces um, off of the waiting list. Basically, kind of first come, first serve. Um, right now, I think there are like 30 people on the waiting list already. Mm -hmm. um, 35, apparently, I'm being told. Um, that's a good thing with a Which, fact checker in the audience. Exactly. It's great. Um, so there's like 35 people on the waiting list, which sounds like a lot, but last year we did churn through a bunch of people off the waiting list. Um, we're going to have a capacity for about 225 total people, including all of the um, speakers and sponsors and volunteers and uh, you know the general attendees that will be there. So we've got plenty of room in the venue um, for that amount, so hopefully we can get some of those people in the waiting list. Off. And then the other way to get a ticket, um, which is still an option, to um, talk to Dale. is to talk to Dale. Give me a call. Um, and Dale can tell you a little bit about sponsorship. With sponsorship, you there's three different levels. There's $250, $500, and $1,000 level sponsors. And the $250, one of the things you get is one pass. So you can get in right now for $250. And if you do a $500 sponsorship, we get three passes included with that. And the $1,000 is five passes. I think so. So those are the three ways. And uh, my email is on the website as well. So you can shoot me an email if you are interested in that. We could still use a few more sponsors. So if you really, really want to attend really want in. camp. It's going to be worthwhile to be there. Yeah. So... So I want to go, before we get into any of the really big specifics about WordCamp Portland, I just want to get a brief, you know, it's crazy. WordCamp, as far as I have noticed, it's the only big um, blog provider conference that goes on. I mean, there's WordCamps going on all over, not just all over the United States, all over the world. Yeah, there are. In fact, uh, the weekend that we're doing WordCamp, which is September 19th and 20th, um, there's also a WordCamp Philippines going on that same weekend. 
Um, last year, when we did WordCamp Portland, there were four different WordCamp events happening on that same weekend. Um, there were three in the United States and one in Canada, I believe. Um, so I don't know... I can't necessarily speak as to why there aren't similar events for other like blog platforms. You don't hear about like a movable type camp. Um, you know, I haven't seen you know a blogger, you know, a Google blogger camp going on or a live journal camp. Um, but within the WordPress community, for whatever reason, um, there's just a lot of people that are really excited about it as a platform. And, you know, it's, you know, I think it's a really good, uh, you know, a blogging system that is pretty, you know, pretty user friendly for someone just getting started. Um, but it also has a lot of power and customization. And so, you know, with that wide range of people that are using it, there's a lot of different things that you can talk about from just kind of the, the very basic stuff of, okay, I just st set up a blog. What do I do now? Or how do I maybe customize my theme? Um, all the way up through the people that are doing the software development on WordPress, because it is an open source platform, uh, it's, you know, if you're a developer, it's pretty easy to get involved with that. And so, you know, at WordCamp, we're going to have sessions that are, you know, aimed for that whole range of audience. So we're going to have some sessions that are super technical. We've got, you know, Will Norris, who's going to talk about, you know, like advanced plugin development, who, you know, we've got, um, you know, People are going to talk about doing some more advanced kind of you know theming and customization stuff, but we'll mm -hmm. also have sessions for people who, you know, maybe they're not a developer, they're not a designer, they're more just you know an author or a content creator. Um, Us, yeah. So content creators. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of different stuff, and it's just one of those things that you know the word camps they're all. Uh, volunteer run events they're generally you know low cost you know i mean ours is twenty dollars for two full days of technical conference um events that you know happen throughout the country and it's just a lot of people get together and are excited about blogging and wordpress you want to run down you you mentioned kind of the different skill sets and skill levels do you want to tell us who some of the speakers are Okay, um, we've got a bunch of really great speakers, and it was really good that after last year's conference went so well, um, I had the happy problem of having way more people that wanted to speak than I had, you know, kind of time slots to fit them in. And so what we're going with is a kind of a hybrid conference format in that we've got about a dozen speakers that we've pre-announced and pre-arranged, um, and they're going to talk on a variety of topics. But we're also going to have unconference time available the entire weekend as well, so that maybe if the prearranged speaker at a given time is very technical, there'll probably be some less technical unconference sessions going on, and vice versa. So at any given time... So are the announced speakers not going to speak against one another? Yeah, nobody who's been announced is ever going to be pitted head-to-head. -head. Nice. So if you want to think about it, think of them as like one track at the conference. You could go see all of the pre-announced speakers, and you would be able to see them all. Um, you wouldn't get to go to any of the unconference sessions, but you wouldn't ever have to choose between them. So um, we've got a few speakers um, that are coming in from outside of Portland, and then we're showcasing a bunch of talented local people as well. So, um, you know, locally we've got um, Jason Grigsby from Cloud4, who is an expert on performance optimization, mm -hmm. and he's going to talk about um, that as far as how it's going to benefit your site, both for, you know, user experience and also um, some of the kind of the behind-the-scenes stuff, even like the environmental aspect of if you have a more efficient site, it will use less power. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got Tyler Sticka, who you guys had on the um, show had here about a month ago. On yeah. The show recently, yeah. Um, yeah, Tyler is a great designer, and if you go look at his website at tylersticka.com, he's just got this beautiful portfolio site that he built entirely using WordPress, and so he's going to talk about building portfolio sites. Um, Laurel Van Fossen, who's probably one of the biggest names in WordPress mm -hmm. um, with her Laurel on WordPress blog, um, has been in the Portland area for about a year and a half now, and she's going to be back um, talking about categories and tags and what's the difference and how can you use them um, to make your site more user-friendly and you know also help drive and retain traffic to your site. Um, one of the, probably what I'm anticipating will be one of the more fun speakers that's going to be there is Scott Parad, who's the CTO of uh, Pet Holdings. They're the company behind I Can Has Cheeseburger, the <laughs> Fail blog, 
um, and the recently launched uh, Emails from Crazy People website. <laughs> um, they've got a lot of experience with managing massive quantities of user-generated content mm-hmm. and experience as probably the site that taxes WordPress more you know, heavily than any other website on the Internet. Um, so Scott's going to be down to talk about his experiences up there. Um, John Hawkins, who's known online as Vegas Geek, uh, was the organizer of WordCamp Las Vegas. He's going to be in town. He's going to talk about um, kind of a more beginner level building a plug-in. Mm-hmm. Um, his experience in the last you know six to nine months, he started doing some plug-in develop. He's going to talk about how to get into that and some of the things he's learned. Uh, we have uh, a couple of people going to talk about podcasting. Um, uh, I don't know uh, who that could have been. That's so, some, uh, so obviously, uh, you know, trouble. That's some trouble yeah. right there. So you and Dr. <laughs> Nirmal will be there to talk about podcasting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the technical aspects of it as well as, you know. And how we use WordPress yeah. to And how you're to using put it out. WordPress yeah. to publish that. Okay. <laughs> If you say so. That's my part. I talk about that. Dr. Norman We're doesn't actually what? touch WordPress. Pod who? <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got uh, Dwayne Story coming down. He lives in Vancouver, outside of Vancouver, B.C. Um, Dwayne is the developer of the WP Touch theme, which <gasps> nice. is uh, a very nice theme. Essentially, it's you know you plug it into your website, and it presents a very nice iPhone interface or mobile interface for your website. We actually use um, that one without you know altering how it looks on a PC at all. Um, we have. Uh, a gentleman locally who is a uh, realtor kind of by background uh, named Garen Selican, who has done some really interesting stuff with um, geolocation data mm-hmm. and mingling that with WordPress. Um, so as a real estate person, he has a lot of interest in you know keeping track of location-based data. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's built some really interesting sets of plugins that plug into WordPress to deal with, you know, both the creation and the display of geotargeted data. Um, and he's got just some really great stuff to show off and talk about how they've built that and what their system can do. Um, they've got a site out there called The Octopus you can go check out that kind of shows off some of that technology. Is, the you know, what, yeah. Um, who else do we have? Oh, we have uh, Miha Baldwin, who is a... VP of something for legit. <laughs> um, he's so he's out of Boulder. He's coming up, and he's going oh, to talk right. about. I forgot. Yes. No, so. I if I use legit on, oh. on one of my sites. Okay, so cool. yeah, yeah. So yeah, legit, which is a site all about um, building community based on trust. Mm-hmm. He's going to come talk about um, how do you build trust mm-hmm. and what does that mean and how do you build that online. Um, so that should be really interesting. I already mentioned Will Norris, who's going to talk about how not to build a WordPress plugin. So these are some of the things that he's nice. learned and seen in his you know many years of doing that. Um, and then, let's see, who have I forgotten anybody off the list? Oh, and then the other one that we recently announced in the last few days that'll be really interesting is we're going to have an SEO Smackdown panel. SEO Smackdown! On Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Is it really going to be on Sunday? It is going to be on Sunday. Oh, my God. So. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, Dude, I, I so have to come up with this. When you talk about SEO, I'm so excited. there's, you know, people have different opinions. Some people think, yeah, it's really important. It's great. Here's all the cool techniques you should do. Some people think that a lot of the SEO people are kind of maybe, you know, selling a little bit of snake oil. Maybe it's not necessarily all that it's cracked up to be. So we're going to get, you know, four or five different people with different backgrounds and different views together and let them, you know, debate it out both with, you know, themselves and then take some questions from the audience. And Uncle Nate's going to moderate yes, it. Yes, uh, Uncle Nate, Nate De Niro, is going to moderate that panel, so I trust he's going to keep things moving and entertaining. And be sassy. Yeah. Very sassy name. Definitely. That's what I'm looking for. And then uh, he isn't one of our main featured speakers, but I did want to also mention that uh, Shane Sanderson, who is uh, the support guy for um, uh, Impact that does the WP e-commerce plugin, mm-hmm. um, he's going to be up here. He lives down in Texas, actually. He's coming up and is probably going to do some unconference stuff around commerce with WordPress and using WP e-commerce specifically. Um, 
And the rumor is he's going to bring a bunch of licenses for that to give away, too. So Very cool. We'll have some cool door prizes. So let me... This is year two for WordCamp in Portland. Mm -hmm. The first year went very well. I would say so, yeah. It's, you know, we sold out last year as well uh, with about 150 people. Mm -hmm. um, so this year, we, <laughs> this year we got a facility that holds 50% more people, and we still sold okay. out over a month in advance of the So the I believe... That I met Dale at WordCamp. We did. Is that correct? Yep. Yes? Okay, so the first time I met Dale was at WordCamp last year. And was that kind of your intro into the Portland tech community? It really was. Yeah? I'd started meeting people through Twitter, but not anything face-to-face. -face. And uh, that all came as a result of being at WordCamp. And why, Aaron, did we decide to have WordCamp? WordCamp... And by we, I mean you. I had nothing but, to do with yeah. it. <laughs> WordCamp got its roots in what is probably a very Portlandy way and the way that we do things in our community. Um, there were four of us sitting at a beer and blog, I believe it was in March or April of last year. Um, it was myself, Reed Beals, Kelly Gamont, and now I'm going to feel bad because I'll forget who the first person was. Might have was been it Betsy? Oh, okay. no, it might have been Chris O'Rourke, I, I believe. Okay. I believe it was Chris O'Rourke. And there was a WordCamp going on that weekend somewhere, and we're sitting there having, you know, a pint at the Green Dragon, and it was like, we could do, we should have a WordCamp in Portland. I could do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I could eat more pies than Raven. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. How'd that work out for you? That didn't work out as well as WordCamp. <laughs> Can we run that picture? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, we don't need a picture. No, no, no picture. Don't no. Need that. no, I was afraid to even like go near Hockley. That. No, we don't need to talk about we that. This is the that tech edition. After <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm sure there's footage. We don't need to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a case of you know <laughs> we could do a word camp, and so you know the four of us kind of talked and threw together a Google group, and a few other people kind of got involved with their input, and um, you know we divided up the tasks and went at it, and I don't necessarily know that we knew exactly what we were doing, but we seemed to have done a fair amount of things right, and last year's event went pretty smoothly. We learned some lessons from last year's event for some things we're doing a little differently this year. But That one long yeah, that was, day was really hard. That was one of the big lessons that we learned was don't start your conference at like, you know, don't kick off at 8 in the morning and plan to run till 10 at night. That was a, <laughs> not a good plan. So this year we're doing two shorter days, basically 9 to 5, um, which should keep things moving along and keep everybody happy and still give us time to you know go out and have some fun on Saturday night if we want. Very, very <laughs> cool. So you did the, the whole WordCamp Portland, and then you went and spoke at WordCamp Vegas. Yeah. Actually, it was kind of funny. Right as we were about to have our first WordCamp Portland, um, like a week ahead of time, I got an email or phone call, I don't remember, from Vegas Geek, from John mm -hmm. Hawkins. Um, and he was at that place that I'd been at six months prior where he's going, I'm thinking about doing a word camp. I have some questions, you know, can you help me? And so I talked to John a few times on the phone as he was getting ready to, to do word camp Las Vegas. Um, and he asked if I'd be interested in coming down to speak. And I'm like... Okay, sure. <laughs> um, and so I went down to Las Vegas in January, and I gave a presentation um, titled Beyond Beer and Blog. And essentially it talked about how Portland was doing lots of cool things in the tech community using kind of online tools and interaction to drive offline events. Mm -hmm. So we talked about, you know. It's like a talk. Yeah. You know, so we talked about the Legion of Tech and... You know, beer and blog and, you know, things like that that were, you know, how Portland is Twitter crazy and stuff. Are you going to talk at WordCamp Portland? I'm not going to talk at WordCamp Portland. I'm, it'll be like a vacation. <laughs> now I, if only. So I'm last sure year, you'll find something to do. Last year I did give a talk at WordCamp Portland. I talked about uh, copyright basics for bloggers, mm -hmm. um, which was fun. Uh, but one of the lessons that I learned last year was that if I'm trying to run the conference, I probably also shouldn't be speaking at the conference because, mm -hmm. you know, just one last one less thing I needed to prepare and get ready for. So this year, um, I'm not planning to do any sessions unless somebody ropes me into an unconference session or something like that. But but you are. But I am. So this is you know, 
Um, I am going to speak at a different WordCamp um, the week after WordCamp Portland. So on September 26th, I believe it is, is WordCamp Seattle, um, which is going to be a one-day WordCamp up in Seattle. And I'm going to be speaking up there um, talking about uh, the, the title is 35 plus steps to launching a blog. So I'm going to talk about... Um, it's kind of an expansion of a, a really long list blog post I did about everything I went through when I launched Social Photo Talk a few months ago. So, so that should be good. It'd be a good kind of beginner, intermediate level talk. Um, share some things that worked well and you know things that didn't. <laughs> Is this Seattle's first WordCamp? This will be Seattle's first WordCamp. So we had a few people from the Seattle area come down last year for WordCamp Portland. Um, and not too long after WordCamp Portland, um, you know, they kind of decided maybe we should do one as well. Um, and so this will be their first one. They haven't announced a ton of details on it. They do have a website up for WordCamp Seattle and the Twitter account and all that. Uh, my understanding is that there's going to be a lot more information announced uh, kind of any day now. Okay. Um, so it should be interesting. So I've always noticed that right before Ignite, there's always a post that someone puts up that tells how you can get the most out of your Ignite experience. And I'm wondering if you can just kind of give us a little rundown on how we can get the most out of our WordCamp experience. Hmm. Okay, so, and Dale, feel free to chime in as well, because you're going to be coming at, I mean, you have the experience of being pretty new last year when you went. But So what I would say off the top of my head would be... Um, plan, you know, talk to people. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you're going to learn things in the sessions based on what's being talked about there, but... Um, a lot of the value in these types of events is in the real informal conversations that are going to happen in the hallways or at the lunchroom or just, you know, in an unconference session. Um, the other thing is, you know, certainly chime in and ask questions in the sessions. Um, I don't think anybody's going to get, you know, you know, Kind of the whole, you know, there are no dumb questions thing, but, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, everybody's going to be at different levels, and so, you know, if you're asking what seems like a basic question, it might be, but that's okay, and there's a lot of people there that have had that experience and can share that with you. Um, Everyone had to start somewhere. Exactly. Um, the other thing that I would say is... Um, talk about it on social networks, so tweet what, you know. And the hashtag The hashtag is, is WCPDX. So, you know, as you're at the event or before the event or after the event and you're tweeting things about the event, you know, use the hashtag. Um, come take lots of pictures, take video, hashtag that, get it online. Um, what else would be good for, what do you think, Dale? That was was that you your first, up? like, tech conference in Portland? It was. So what would you say coming in, did you know anybody who was there? Not face-to-face. -face. So why don't you tell us kind of what your experience was and tips for people. Because I, I looked at the list and I saw a lot of names I didn't recognize on the list. For so, this year? Yeah. 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 So what should people do if they're coming in and they don't know anybody and they're not sure what's going on? Right. What can they do to optimize their WordCamp experience? Don't be afraid of being there. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid of the people that are there. Um, and one of the things is you were talking about... Very few of us fight. Yeah. You know, it's like people that are on social networks. They're there to meet people. Mm -hmm. People go to these events to meet people. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice component and something to remember. Um, especially the unconference sessions, they're not the traditional session. They're really a conversation. And so just because there's one person or a couple of people that might be leading it, don't be afraid, like you were saying, to interject to ask questions or to give input or thoughts as you've experienced things or if you have questions about them because it's true people aren't afraid of, or they shouldn't be afraid of asking those questions because there's probably other people in the room that are thinking the same thing but don't necessarily verbalize it so somebody has to and that gets those conversations going um, if you've got questions, kind of, I know for, in fact, one of the things you and I had that was a commonality last year was we were both still on Blogger. We were both moving We were over. still on Blogger, and yeah. we were trying to figure out how do we even move. So we were really kind of rudimentary on the WordPress side of it, but we were there because that was one of kind of the goals. I know that for me that was a goal, and I remember that was it something was, that was for was you, was, the goal. I, had, I think I had ported my information yep. from Blogger over to the um, WordPress.com, yep. and I needed to then set up WordPress.org. That's what I wanted was my, my own custom domain. Exactly. And I was a little 
baffled for a so, moment. So, <laughs> you know, I, I went there with kind of, that was my agenda, is mm -hmm. I knew I had this blogger platform and I knew I wanted to move over, but I didn't know how to do that. And so I had a plan that I needed to talk to somebody, whether it was in the session or somebody in the hallway, how do I make this happen? And so, I mean, I had prepared my questions in advance, thinking somewhere along the way I'm going to get these answers. Mm -hmm. And I did. So, that so was don't a good be thing. afraid to go in with an agenda. Absolutely not. And the other thing is, especially if you haven't been to an unconference before, the whole idea is kind of goofy. Chaos. Yeah, I mean, it, it's chaos. And that there's controlled, you know, vaguely chaos. controlled there's, chaos. There's not a plan going in. And what I would say is, if you've got an idea for something that you want to learn or something you want to talk about or a problem that you're having, Put it up as an unconference session. Just because you're the one who suggestion suggests an unconference idea doesn't mean that you need to go into that room and be the expert and give a talk for an it hour. It could just be a discussion. It could, yeah, it could be. You know, I'm having problems with you know, you know, I you know, f font or layout items with my theme in CSS, or it could be that you know, how do you come up with new ideas to blog about, or mm -hmm. you know, maybe you know. Okay, I have stats on my blog, but what can I really get out of that? What you know, what can I learn from that? So, just throw an idea up there and have a conversation. All you have to do is kind of get that conversation started, but you don't have to. It doesn't mean you have to talk for an hour. Are we going to have the traditional post-it note, big grid? Yep, that's the plan. Is that um, we'll have a location where we basically have a grid with the available rooms. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a really, you know, we're fortunate that we have kind of some flexibility with the room space at Web Trends. Um, so we're going to have probably, um, kind of a main room, um, and then, you know, three or four smaller rooms. And as people have registered, we've asked them some questions about kind of their general background and interests. So mm -hmm. we know, we'll be able to know, do we have a really technical audience or is it a good mix or is it really not a technical audience? So hopefully we can, um, you know, slot speakers and sessions into rooms so that everybody's comfortable. Um, so that'll be good, yeah. We'll have several areas available, and, you know, there's a lot of space that, you know, like I said, if you've got three or four people having an interesting conversation in a corner in the hallway, that's great, too. I mean, so it's... So when is that portion, when is the scheduling of the unconference session? Is going to be like a morning opening kind of thing? Yeah, it will start uh, first thing in the morning on Saturday. I'll probably give kind of some opening comments. You are going to speak. Ha! I knew it. Exactly. I knew it. And it's going to be, I'll guarantee it's probably going to be the most boring talk of the <laughs> entire weekend. I'm probably going to say things like where the restrooms are, and you know stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Give away a door prize as an incentive for people, people to show up on exciting. time. People, um, people like door. Prizes. Where the bathroom yes. is is yeah. an important. It is important. It is. Conversation. I often and we've got some great door prizes. I'm sure we'll have more by the time we get there. But uh, bacon. Yes, bacon.com has donated a fifty dollar gift certificate. Uh, Whiffies is donating a card that's good for ten free pies. Bacon and pie. Bacon and pie. Bacon yes. and Whiffies. Yeah, Greg oh, needs to do some Greg, bacon pie. Greg, Greg are you listening? Bacon pie. Bacon pie. Um, Greg, talk to Beaton over at the uh, bacon and get some of his bacon and then put it in a pie and then tell me when you have it. <laughs> we'll all, we'll but, all go to Whiffy's. Yeah, but don't put it in the lemon pie because so, I don't think I'd like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned Shane is going to have some licenses for WP e commerce we can mm -hmm. give away. Uh, we also. Um, have three copies of Mars Edit, which is a very popular blog, blogging editor for mm -hmm. the Mac. Uh, we have three copies of that we're going to be giving away, donated by Red Sweater, the software manufacturer. Um, and I'm sure we're going to probably have some more stuff as we get closer. So Very, very cool. Yay for free stuff. I think yay for free stuff is in order. So, so if you want to sign up, go and sign up for the wait list. Don't be afraid. Don't delay on the wait list. Yeah, don't delay because what they'll do is they'll go through the wait list in the order that the that the uh, request was received. Oh, and just to clarify a couple things on that waitlist process, because apparently there's some good rumors going around now. Um, I guess there's some rumors that if you're on the waitlist, it's going to cost you more to get in than if you weren't on the waitlist, and that's, that's not true. Not true. No. Um, I like it. The waitlist <laughs> is the wait free. scalping. I like it. Yeah. Uh, come see Dr. Normal. I will get you some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, if people are do have tickets and they're not able to make it to the conference um tickets are non-refundable but they are transferable so if you can't make it and you've got a friend or a co-worker who wants to come we can help 
facilitate, you know, changing the name in our system so you can transfer that ticket to them directly. And then if you, you know, if you're not able to come and you don't know anybody to give your ticket to, that's when we'll then, you know, take the next name off the wait list. So. Okay. Very, very good. Well, I think we've done our 30 minutes of WordPress tech. It's time to move on and say goodnight. We'll be back with After Hours, and we'll also be back next week uh, when we talk to uh, Brett Burmeister Dieselboy about Food Carts Portland.